damn! Everybody gets an equally <laughs> amount. Of oh god, I set a trap! I didn't mean to! Where is me? What have you done? I don't know, I'm sorry! You know how I find inspiration? I depress the <laughs> out of myself. Damn. And then after I depress the shit out of myself, I then, you know, I'm like, you know, this isn't that bad. You know, life's not that bad. I have two forms of inspiration. One of them is not as prevalent anymore as it was when I was younger, mm -hmm. which was dreams. Like, I would take inspiration from my dreams because, like, me and one of my friends from church, I had a dream one time, and it was kind of a nightmare, actually, but it was like... Our old church building was really creepy and stuff. And so we talked forever about ideas for a survival horror game using that church as like the main hub world of like the uh, place it would be set in. Yeah. We drew out a lot of ideas and like in retrospect as an adult, like they weren't that great. Like there were kids coming up with ideas for video games, you know, but so just some like of them were still kind of neat. But uh, and then the other thing is just my ADD brain, like when it wants to. Eventually, it will wrap around to, hey, that's kind of a cool idea. Yeah. It's just when it wants to, though. It's really hard to make it do things. But I have a third source. Mm -hmm. And you talked to me about it earlier today. And it's not the greatest suggestion. I don't really suggest that everybody go do this. It's, it's really up to you. If you've never talked to your doctor about such a thing... And you think that you have the same problem that I have, might be worth talking to him about, but it's got side effects over long periods of time. But medication for ADD. Mm -hmm. Mine in particular, that was prescribed Adderall. <clears throat> if I want to sit down and write a full set of lyrics for a song or write out something, whatever it may be, if I'm on Adderall, I can make that happen. And that is the only time that I can 100% make that happen without my brain drawing blanks. Well, the reason why I was talking about that earlier is because of an inspirational thing that happened that I'm glad that is finally starting to come to fruition. CostPlusDrugs.com It is a uh, website that Mark Cuban made. Basically, instead of the like regular standard industry 100% Markup plus, you know, extra on top of that. Mark Cuban instead does a 15% markup on the price of uh, medications. Usually they're generics. Generics being like the same medication, just not name brand. So basically he puts them on there for their list price plus 15%, which by comparison, uh, the one that stood out to me the most when I looked at it earlier, uh, let's see, costplusdrugs.com. All the medications, in terms of retail price, the one that stood out to me was Epsicom. Uh, Epsicom, uh, they have a generic for it called Abacavir. The retail price for that uh, is one thousand six hundred. Is one thousand ninety six dollars. The retail price on Cost Plus Drugs is only fifty seven dollars. Then there's Albin, Albendazole, Albendazole, which is a generic for Albenza, Albenza which normally costs $6,500, will only cost you $450. And go check out Albuterol Pro Air generic. Yeah, Albuterol, there it is, generic Pro Air, uh, costs $55 normally, and on here it's $30. So basically, you save $25. So, Nick can go to this place and get his albuterol inhalers for basically a lot freaking less. Instead of having to go to a pharmacy and basically get screwed over by the, if by the pharmacy. Only they companies. would release the fucking patent on the steroid inhalers that help you manage your asthma without fucking needing this all the time. Yeah. Basically, that's a crutch. Whereas the steroid one is basically like a full, like, a full, like, a more, like, full fix. Mm. It's more like, this is a band-aid, whereas, like, the steroid thing is more of, like, a suture. Yeah. Like, it actually does. Sense. 
actually it's does like, the job. It's like you're going to have to change this every so many hours to keep the blood from spilling out. But, like, if you suture it closed, then you don't really need that. But I'm just, like, looking at the savings on here. It's like six hundred save $671. Uh, dude, Abilify. For God's sakes, there's a generic on here for Abilify. The regular price is $677, and they have it on here for $6. Literally less than one hundredth of the price. God, I hate the pharmaceutical company so yep. much, dude. And the thing is, again, it's co it's a it's a collaborative thing. The federal government allows these pharmaceutical companies to get away with it, and the pharmaceutical companies in turn give kickbacks to the federal government so that the federal government will keep just writing laws that benefit them. That's it. That's how this game works. It's basically a money it's basically a gigantic money money laundering scheme. By the way, if you're one of those people who sees me like talk about having an inhaler on here or using an inhaler on here and then you like to fucking make fun of this, this is not nearly as fucking bad as coating your lungs with this. And yes, they're both fucking stupid. And I realize they're both fucking stupid because I didn't have problems with asthma again until I started doing this. But it was a fucking dumb decision I made. And it's not that fucking easy to just quit doing them either because if you've never had an addiction before, you can just shut your fucking mouth because you don't know what like, the hell you're talking yeah, about. People suffer with addictions all the time, and I'm glad that, for the most part, my... Like, I've had family members who have been affected by it. My mother was affected by it really badly, and I'm glad she recovered. But, again, you know, addiction is something that just... Once it hits you, it's hard to break. And Nick like, has done his due diligence to try and break himself on multiple things. But, again, it just takes time. It takes effort. And given that, you know, for him... Whenever something has, like, dug itself into your brain so fucking much that it's become not just a habit, but also a thing that makes you physically ill if you try to stop, it's not that easy to stop. No, it isn't. Like, and you won't understand that until you try it yourself. But anyways, we're not talking about addictions. We're talking about inspiration. Yes. But so. getting inspiration to overcome various things... Whether that be, you know, halting of a production, which we recently just got over, and I'm glad that we did because here we are now on the precipice of something amazing. Uh, My main inspiration is usually all of these other YouTube videos we watch and react to. Well, I get inspiration from these, of course. And I'm inspired by video games, since why it's one of my main hobbies. Well, the one that inspired me big time was uh, Draw My Life by Markiplier and, uh, and Ryan Higa. Both of those were just, like, tremendously well done. But anyway, I'll sh show you this. Let's go ahead and get back to it. Did you know that 99% of everything I've ever said on this channel has been written out ahead of time, including the mispronunciation of the word percent? It would be 100% <laughs> scripted, but, you know, the drawing challenge videos, you can't really script that kind of content, so... Or can you? But every other video has had a script, and that includes the worst video I've ever made, my very first one. So you know those books you make in a <sighs> I'm gonna stop it right there because I physically cannot watch another nanosecond of my first video. I want to take it down so bad, but I'm keeping it up so you can see how much I've improved. Yes. Because like it or not, the very first thing you make of something is going to be bad. But you have to make the bad thing first so you know how to make things good. <laughs> the point is, even that sad excuse of a video was scripted. And today, I want to talk about what goes on in the script writing process and how James, it is... I see that over there on the typewriter. James. James. I'm sure he would. He did. He kissed Aaron for uh, 40k. On really? There. Yes. He gave him 40k for that? Yes. All right, Aaron. Inspiration and some tips for writing better scripts. Aaron will pay a lot because for a little I bit of attention. Well, and here's another thing too. We saw James at Scribble Showdown, and it was awesome. He was like, he was very funny. Man, Aaron, if you were hurting that bad for human contact, I would have gave you a hug. Like, what the fuck? Dude, man? Aaron's married. He has Susie, who is actually a very <laughs> attractive and very funny person. But damn, thing I'm not a hundred percent happy with. Then I'm stuck working on a crappy video for the next month, like this one. People hey. often tell me, oh. I want to make YouTube videos, but uh, my life's super boring. <laughs> I wish I could have an exciting life like yours. <laughs> and I always respond with, my most popular series is about me talking about working at a minimum wage small local sandwich shop. A script does not need to be an edge of your seat, high stakes level story. It needs to be an entertaining story. 
And yes. I believe if told in a certain way, any story can be an entertaining story. The first piece of advice that I can give that will immediately improve your scripts is, drum roll please, in five, four, three, getting to the point. Yes. Because I do animation, the longer the script I make, the longer the video will be, and the longer my team and I will have to spend working on the video and the more depressed I'll get. So I've subconsciously gotten into the habit of writing shorter scripts that get to the point and cut out unnecessary and unfunny details. I feel like the American <laughs> school system has brainwashed kids into thinking that the best way to express ideas is through the form of a five paragraph essay. Now, have yeah. you ever read a five? That is very true. Yeah. They're very adamant on that. Look, like they want you to write so much and it's not like because that is the definitive way to do things It's because they fucking ran out of ideas of how to teach you and they want you to stay busy. They want you to waste time. Yep. They basically, that's it. They don't, it's like, okay, write me a short story As based on this. someone who completed all of high school plus five years of college, I will tell you 100%, the thing that I garnered the least from out of all that is all the goddamn fucking essays I wrote. Yep. Same. They were all fucking stupid. Yes. And they were unnecessary and I didn't learn shit from doing them. Yep. Fuck you, public school system. Yeah. You are an absolute nightmare. Fuck the hours of my life you wasted. Yes. Like, eat my ass. Yeah. Sorry about the editing you'll probably have to do on that. <laughs> A little bit, probably. But uh, overall, I agree 100%, man. I mean, look, for me, the devils are always in the details, and that's why whenever I tell my stories, I often include an, an innocuous amount of details. I mean, Jesus Christ. I... Like, it's absurd sometimes how many details I include. But In Include the details to the point that it makes sense to include the details. That's, and, and, that's my, that, and that's been my problem over time. Like, describing, I've gotten better Describing the shape of the poop that comes out of someone's butthole is just gratuitous at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just and, stop at a point. Like, yeah. God damn. Uh, you Get the you idea don't have across to be as descriptive and, and Yeah, being Move metaphorical. On. Exactly. So for me, all in all, yeah. That's I agree 100 percent with what you're saying, Nick. But I I think you should write a story like as detailed as you want to. But if it can be a short story, no need to like drag everyone over the coals with a regaling of you know the shape of your shit. That's why I wasn't like I want to make a film. I'm like I want to make a short film. Yeah. So because it's a good starting point, like short film. Like, yeah. You don't need to start with it's a like what we did with the film. offer. The offer turned out really good. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, okay, we can do this. Now we go a little longer. Let's make the new SCP film that we're doing. And that's what we're doing. Anyway, It'll be back a to this. little longer. Quite a bit longer. It's going to be about 30 minutes from what I understand. Oh, damn. Yep. That was about like 15. It's what I was expecting, but then uh, uh, he showed me like the shot list and the amount of time that these shots take. It's going to be about 25, 30 minutes. That's kick-ass. <laughs> I know. I'm excited. Yeah. If paragraph essay that you wrote, they're boring as shit. And most schools require essays to have a minimum word count. Yeah. So we are now training the next generation into purposely writing long-winded and wordy thoughts that could have been shortened down to a sentence. Yep. Holy crap. You Dude, called he's, that. He's so right. You've all written essays. You know all about repeating ideas you've already written, or saying the same thing over and over, or reiterating thoughts more than once, or, or saying it in the most over ridiculously, overly, unnecessarily long way you can think of, just to fucking dig up space. It has to be 2,000 words. Get the fuck out of here. Just tell kids, hey, write a story that conveys your point as simply and as eloquent and as eloquently as possible. And the shorter, and the person who writes the shortest one and does the best work wins. There's a fucking reason there is a Reddit that is ridiculously popular that's called one sentence horror stories. Yeah, I've seen those, like one and two sentence horror stories. Yeah, some like, of them are just genius. You don't fucking need a five paragraph essay to convey art to someone. And now, if you're writing a novel, if you're absurd. writing a novel, okay, you're being very descriptive and you're really. But if you're writing a novel, you better be fucking building a world. That's what I'm saying. And like See, a lot of the times, it's not it, it, when you're doing essays, you're not building a world. No, like, you're not. They're having you be like, all right. Why does it suck that people are starving in Africa? And that's pretty easy to convey in a very short amount of words why it fucking sucks. Because, well, it's because people of the... deserve to eat 
and it really fucking sucks that there's places in the well, world that like people can't just eat when they want to. And, and again, that's about yeah. the gist of it. Well, like, it's just like, well, if you want to talk about like the colonialism that destabilized Africa, the simple fact that there are constant wars in Africa over power. If you want to talk about like. Like, as a you kid, can go, you don't know uh, this shit. A bad example. You can go back through history with stuff like that. But again, as a kid, you don't know this shit. That's true, too. But as an adult, you know, you're just like, oh, well, this is the reason. And they're why. trying to get you, I think, to look into stuff like that when you're writing about stuff like that. But it's hard to just know what you're looking for unless you previously studied that kind of stuff. Yeah. And plus, back when we were in school, we didn't have these. That's I didn't have true, this at my yeah. disposal at all freaking times where I could just look up what I had questions about. Instead, it's just like... Uh, how many people died in the Rwandan massacre? You just have to guess it. Like, instead of like knowing, you that's just why have I think the best essay I wrote was one of the last ones I wrote when I was in college and I was on Adderall, and I realized that I forgot to do it until the class period that I was doing it in, and I got my work done early in that class period, and then wrote the essay in one class period, and it was a banger. Nice. But I did it in like. 45 minutes when I probably should have spent a week on it. <laughs> like, well, dude, if you, but no, that's the thing. If the muse is in your ear and just like going, you do that. You ride that. You don't dis, like, you don't. I use like, the internet to my advantage to quickly Google things and look up things that made sense for putting into it. So. But that's the thing. Like, if the muse is talking Could, to you, you're basically just like. back in elementary, go. middle school. Like. All right. Sorry. Let's go ahead with this. Sorry. Abundant amount of times or. Looking up words on thesaurus.com to hit that 500 minimum word count. Been there. Before. Well, you may not be. Well, ready not to not that, but you know, just like I have, I've had to look up words that rhyme and look up words that are that mean differently from what I've said before, so I don't wind up repeating myself. I'll still look up words scripts. that rhyme when I'm writing lyrics. Rhyme Zone, RhymeZone.com, dude. Yeah. I love that place. Hear this, but you will not need to write five paragraph essays in your daily life. Mm -mm. Shakespeare knew about this when in the 1300s he wrote. Brevity is the soul of wit. Which is ironic, because he really liked to use a lot of unnecessary words. Yeah. I once clicked on a video and that was titled something like, Top 10 Scary Things That Have Happened When Hiking or something. And I thought, yeah, that sounds like a good video to watch at 3 in the morning. And I swear, the video started out like, Whether it's to have a healthier lifestyle or Holy shit, chills! Outdoors, Hiking is a wonderful activity enjoyed by millions of people across the globe of America. But <laughs> across the globe of America. Also, chills if you if you see this, loved you or love your cameo and smiling friends. But sometimes this wonderful activity enjoyed by billions can sometimes turn Deadly? Why are you defining what a hike is? We all know. Just show me the blurry photos of Bigfoot already until I'm too scared to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> kind of to the point. Yeah. Honestly, I, dude, I had a video where it was literally this guy like talking innocuously for like seven minutes about just like this one thing, this one topic I was interested in. And I'm just like, oh my God. And then he finally got to the point at like eight minutes. Dude, I literally looked up a thing like uh, the other I day. It was like uh, uh, tips for this game. And it's like fucking like, for example, it was like, yeah, so Bayonetta came out in this year and it's this action game with bloody, bloody, blah, and bloody, blah. And like, trying to fill up those really eight cool minutes. And stylish trying to fill up those eight minutes, huh? And I'm just like, dude, I know what it fucking is. That's why I'm looking for tips for it. Get to the tips. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, and that's the thing. The video I was on, I just scrolled down. Why would I look up tips for something I didn't know what the fuck it was? By the way, everyone, he is saying tips, not tips. T-I-P-S. Not... Yeah, I'll look that up sometimes, too. <laughs> that's for different reasons. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But let's be honest here, man. I, I scrolled down in that one video I was watching, and the answer was literally like the top comment. It's like, here, I just saved eight minutes of your life. You're welcome. And it's just like, oh, hey, Caleb. That's the real MVP right there. Yeah. And I know Caleb's in this video, and he's going to have to work on multiple timestamps, making you work for your fucking paycheck, asshole. Anyway, sorry. So how do I come up with these video ideas? Well, I start by thinking... What can I rant about for hours? Something no. that makes me go, don't get me started on blank. And then I do get started and I write those thoughts on a Google Doc. 
And sometimes my thoughts are jumbled and incoherent like I've been up all night watching Bigfoot videos, but I don't care. I just need to get these thoughts out of my head and splattered onto a piece of paper. Yes. And sometimes just starting to write will make me think of- Adderall! Like, oh. And another thing! And I repeat that process until the script's done. And then when I'm done writing the script, it's actually not even close to being done. Nope. Once I've finished writing, I send the script off to some of my friends and the Amazing, and they look over it with the freshest of eyes some of my friends and the amazing. <laughs> and they'll give me notes saying, hey, you misspelled percent here. Or, hey, I have a joke you can add. Or, hey, wait, James, I thought I was your friend. And then I'll choose which of their jokes is the funniest and that I'm going to steal. Here's a fun little YouTuber behind the scenes fact. Since 2018, there's a circle of friends I have where we all trade and read each other's scripts and make suggestions and pitch jokes. And once I'm done reading someone else's script, I get to watch their finished video a month or two or eight months later and see if the jokes I pitched made the cut. And then I get to smile to myself because no one knows that I was the one who wrote that joke <laughs> because none of us credit each other because none of us care. Literally the last 30 one of seconds them being of my super- Obviously the cutie pie, Jaden. Uh-huh. Oh. Which, uh, okay, here's another thing too. Uh, this is something that me and Nick did Whenever we were writing the script for, uh, whenever we were writing the script for uh, the SCP film that we were doing, we brought Nick in, and he wanted to have like final say on several things. And he actually came on to set with us, and he had a few pointers to add for like how this character would be and everything like that. And it worked beautifully. It worked out very, very well. And also, that's the thing with the that's the thing with like we also like Aldo. Aldo, I gave him like the outline of what we were gonna do next when the net with the next SCP film, and he basically just run with it. And I'm and he's sent me stuff. I've sent some pointers back, and we're just gonna collaborate like that. But here's the thing: when it comes to script writing and stuff like this, I'm gonna give Aldo credit on this, and especially if he winds up writing the most of it, he'll get lead credit on it. I don't care, because in all honesty, if someone does the work on this, I want them to get the credit that they deserve. That's just like in the credits. I'm gonna put BT like BTS photography, like behind the scenes photography. Uh, I'm gonna probably put Megan in there because you know she she did amazing work doing behind the scenes photography and videography for us. Thank you again, Megan. If you ever see this, Two Away Part Four video was written by this kid named Infamous Swoosh. I wrote in my script, conclusion goes here, and he just wrote one for me. And I went, yeah, I'll use that, <laughs> and not credit you. But it's okay, because we all don't credit each other equally, so it's a win-win. Everyone in the friend circle gets to look funnier than they actually are. Some days I'll stumble witch. onto a topic that I just know I'm going to make a video about, and then the scripts are a breeze to write. But then there are some days where I'm content with the world, and I got nothing that gets me started. But I can't just not make a script that month. Otherwise, what would I make a video about? Random thoughts? I still gotta put oh. bread on the table, and I'll... Hey, Jaden did that. Yeah, she did that multiple times. Dude. That's mean. Uh, he's joking, of yeah. course. I think this is him getting back at Jaden for all the times she tortured him in Pico Park. Jaden, you are a troll. God, a mercy woman. Could be. Also, my team would be out of a job. So on those days, you're basically forcing yourself to be creative on demand, <clears throat> which is not the easiest thing to do. But fortunately, I have a few tricks to get the creative juices flowing. It's called drugs. I'm just kidding. It's called Adderall. Wait. Okay, but... For <laughs> he knows what the fuck's up. It, it's a fucking magical elixir, I swear to God. It's like a potion you would go get from a fucking alchemist in a fantasy game. It fucking works. It's literally a potion of intellect. It's a potion of wisdom. It's a potion of concentration. It fucking does the shit that's advertised on the box better than anything else I've ever seen. Like fucking shit that says it'll make your laundry smell good. Eh, it smells all right. Like fucking Adderall, like, we'll make your concentration fucking amazing. We'll give you laser fucking focus. We'll make your brain goddamn actually work. It does all that shit. Mm -hmm. And it's weird that we mentioned Adderall before this video even started. People are okay. Here's the thing. People think that we watch these videos in advance. Nick, can you confirm? No, I didn't that, watch this in advance. No, me neither. That's the thing. But there's gonna be someone down in the comments down below. It's like, yeah, that's pretty sus, guys. That you know about Adderall and you mentioned Adderall before the video even started. And it's a here's the thing, guys. It's called it's called coincidence. Like whether you believe in it, whether you don't believe in it, it's like everything happens for a reason. Or hey, that's a good cool. Hey, that's a freaky coincidence. Like 
I don't care. You can think whatever you want. You can have whatever thoughts you want on this. If you think we're faking it, if you think this and that, we are not joking about this. We literally just discussed this beforehand because, like, hey, Adderall is something that Nick really needs. We went over this earlier, and it's just like, hey, you know, Adderall is, like, a way for you to get inspiration. Dude, and it fucking works. It does. And according to James, this is his miracle drug. My brain is basically... The best way I can describe this, okay, so... All right, so you know they give you that whole thing, it's like the little neurons, and they fire things off between each other. Yep. Right? And it's like, you ever played a video game, and you had, like, a bridge, and the bridge, like, lights up? Mm Mm-hmm. And then you can go across it, but it it blinks out at a point, and then it lights back up, and you have to time it right, right? Yep. It feels like that's what my neurons are doing. Like, it's like they have the bridge between them, but they're not active constantly basically it's like they're it's blinking like, on and off it's like someone's and got it's the like so if i try to send a thought and through and one of those is blinked off just fucking doesn't you know it falls off the fucking cliff yeah um basically that but thought just adderall died. turns all the bridges constantly on and it like, makes it a leisurely stroll it's like <laughs> yeah it, it makes it so that thoughts can go from point a to point b obstruction free like yeah and he and honestly, I, I won't, I'm interested to hear what James. It's funny saying. to me too. I never realized until just now that the beginning letters of Adderall are A D D. For real, I do have this really complicated technique to get ideas. So write these steps down, okay? What I do is I get a pen and a notebook, put on some lo-fi, and just write about nothing specific. Just whatever my brain thinks is important. I am writing right now with my left hand. Most people are right-handed, but I am special and am left-handed. I'm glad my teachers didn't force me to be right-handed. They were more concerned about my messy handwriting and horrible spelling. (gasps) Usually the ideas don't come back quickly, but you get what I'm talking about. So many times at conventions, I'll be on a panel and people will ask for advice about starting a YouTube channel, and everyone on the panel will say, if you want to start a YouTube channel, you just gotta do it. You know, hit the upload button a couple of times. This is true. I mean, say what, uh, this is the same thing I told Chad. I was like, look, consistency is key. And the better you get at this, the better you get at putting, putting stuff out there and presenting yourself, the more natural it will be. That's just, the, that's just the gist of it. That's the main focus everyone needs to take whenever it comes to creating YouTube channels. Or a YouTube channel, because my nephew wanted to create a YouTube uh, YouTube channel. He recorded all these videos and everything on his iPad and his phone and everything. But here's the problem. He never released any of them. He never put any of them up because he was because he kept like thinking to himself, Oh, what, what will people say? People will hate it. People this, people that. And, and instead of just like putting it out there, you have to be willing to put yourself out there. You have to. That is a big key component. You can't just... I hate to say this term, you can't pussyfoot around and expect, you know, the YouTube game to just come to you. It is something that you have to take initiative on, and you have to step the fuck up. That's just the best advice I can give anyone out there. It doesn't matter if you do reaction videos, You're not going to become a YouTuber by not even taking the first step and creating a fucking account. Yeah. And uploading a fucking first video. And your videos, here's the thing, your videos in the beginning usually will not get a lot of traffic. It is when you are doing stuff on a consistent basis that the algorithm will realize, oh, this guy's being very, this person is being very consistent with their videos. Hey, how about we put them in the algorithm a little bit? Okay. Also, tags sometimes do and don't matter. So it's always important, just in case, put tags in your videos. All right? Because the tags, for instance, like when you see stuff like, uh, you know, it's right now it's trending, but usually you'll see like hashtag, like, Odd ones out. Hashtag inspiration. Hashtag. You'll see those up there. And you'll also see we have the tags right here as well. Inspiration. Writing. Motivate. Motiv- motivation. There, you're missing an A there, James. Uh, how to get inspired. How to get motivation. Burnout. Notebook. Pen. Write. Script. Get to the point. Odd ones out. Odd. Odd. The odd is out. The odd <laughs> ones out. Cartoon. Animation. Comedy. Funny. Lol. <laughs> so, yeah. Fair enough. Honestly, Tags matter sometimes, and always like it doesn't how he matter even has if has a uh, misspelling of his name as a tag. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's honestly one of the funniest parts of it. So just in case somebody's a dirt pass. Yeah, someone someone's a head ass. Yeah, we have the odd is out. 
<laughs> so that's that's the best thing I can offer. And I guarantee these guys would offer the same advice. So we need to tag our videos both the Renegade Media Group and the Renegades Media Group, just in case. You know, like. That's right. <laughs> and also, I, well, I also put Renegades React in there as well yeah. because people still look for the channel Renegades React when we're Renegade Media Group. And that's the thing, and that's why and the reason why I changed it to Renegade Media Group because I don't just want to be a reaction channel. I know reactions are our bread and butter and what a lot of people tune into us for, but that's not what I just want to do. I mean, if I wanted to relegate myself to that, then yeah, I would change the name of this channel to Renegade uh, Renegades React, and I would just like start like Renegade Films or Renegade Music or re like we did Renegade Gaming, which is about to hit four thousand subs, and I'm very happy about that. And, um, and, if you didn't uh, know we had a Renegade Gaming channel, you need to go check that shit out. Oh, right? yeah. It'll be right down there in the description. And it'll be the first comment you see. It'll be pinned with our most recent video, which I think is another Rubber Bandits video that, again, we've had a shit ton of fun with Rubber Bandits. It's actually the, I think, the, the one, one you're I'm in. in. Yeah. I think the one you're in, yeah. Can't wait to see that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, let's get back to this. And I feel kind of bad for people who traveled far and wide to a convention and paid for a hotel and waited in line just to hear a bunch of YouTubers say, you just gotta do it. And it sounds cliche, but it's true. It is. You either say that or be more entertaining, and that's rude, so. Recently, I went on tour performing a live show called Scribble Showdown. Hey! I'll talk more about it in the next video, don't worry. And before every show, we had a Q&A panel, and the most... <laughs> Okay, okay. We need worry. to talk, James. We need to show, talk. We had a Q and A panel. Okay, look at Ross and look at Jaden. <laughs> Why did you do that to them, <laughs> Ross? I can understand like derpy. Ross. Obviously, he, he left, does this to himself. He left Emily alone because yes, uh, he's afraid she's gonna kill him. Yeah, and then Aaron, of course, you know, probably just doesn't know her as well. But he's like, I can get away with this with Jaden. Yeah, Jaden, like, oh my gosh, that's just hilarious. Jaden's gonna watch it. She's gonna be like. All right, motherfucker. All right. All yeah. right, James. And She'll then her next video, back she's going to have James just like, hey, yeah, We'll dude. have to keep a lookout for the next time he shows up in one of hers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, James is just going to be in the next one. He's just going to be like, ha, ha. <laughs> Some stupid face. Like just that. with the odd ones out, Art. And then, of course, like Ross. Like freaking, uh... Ross, from what I understand, trolls everybody. So James doing this here, I understand. And Ross understands, too. But yeah, anyway. So Ross deserves the, all the trolling after what I saw at Scribble Show Noon. He deserves. He deserves. That man put things in my head that I could have lived without easily. <laughs> that are never going away. Yeah. Never. I could have <laughs> had a happy life without seeing that, but no, he had to show it to me anyway. <laughs> Especially Grimace from McDonald's. like. Oh, and everyone else as Grimace. As if McDonald's, McDonald's wasn't already ruined for me now. <laughs> Fucking awful. Yeah, horrible. Horrible. Okay, sorry. Also, we have a vlog where we sh with the Scribble Showdown. Y'all can check it out. Uh, in the Actually, no, it won't be linked in the description. It'll be linked somewhere. I'll probably have it in like the Stick after credits. in the comment section. Yeah, uh, somewhere. You'll see it. The most frequent question we got asked was, can you read my screenplay and how do you get motivation? And the answer to that question is no and... You don't. You get disciplined. Discipline comes before <laughs> motivation. If you have a project you want to start or a skill you want to learn, you can't wait around for motivation to hit. Yes. Sometimes it doesn't come. Never. Instead, you have to set a schedule where you say, okay, on this day, from this time to this time, I'm going to put in the effort to achieve my goal. And if you don't know where- It's the same with working out. It's the same with ins with art. It's the same with music. It's the same anytime you want to commit yourself to a craft that you want to have some sort of clout in, you have to put a little bit of time and dedicate that time to what you want. And it's just like us getting the schedule up there in the hallway. I'm glad we finally got that because that means that the house is going to be more clean on a regular basis. Also, not only that, but- it makes it to where I know what to do so that I can properly, like, <laughs> clean the house, even though my room is a fucking uh, pigsty right now. It's mostly me cleaning, but... Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, like, I don't that's mind That's what cleaning. my rent is supposed to be, and our other roommate was just like, hey, why don't we just go ahead and put these on certain days instead of having it be like, when I notice something needs to be cleaned, I'll put it on there. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like, And so we did a schedule, and now... I've been consistently cleaning things for the past several days, and I feel better about myself, and I feel better about the state of the house, and I feel better about 
generally anything. Like, yeah. Uh, I feel better. Yes. Yeah. Where to start? A good first step would be to just get your goals into writing. Get your thoughts yes. out onto something physical. So grab a pen and a piece of paper and just ask your friends to read your screenplay because I'm too busy. So busy that I didn't even have time to record an end card. So you know those books you make in elementary school that you oh my write God. as a class and some publishing company makes them into a real book so your family can buy cards? What the fuck? It was him basically like murdering the, his original video. <laughs> Here's the thing. I went back and I had to get rid of a lot of our older videos because of the fact that my nephew participated in them and he is a young man, like a very, very young kid. I had to go back and like private those or delete those. And it sucks because, you know, that's where our channel started. But our first reaction video, I'm never going to delete. I have had way... I, ha I love that video way too much because... It's actually in this room. It's actually when the, the futon that we had was right there, right in the middle of the room. We actually still have the futon. You have the TV like over the fireplace or something? Uh, the TV was actually right in front of the fireplace. Oh, okay. And it was, uh, it was that old uh, uh, plasma that we had. That so I does that mean this support beam chan is different from... That, 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 well, no. Support beam chan from the original run was here. Oh, so it was this one? Yeah. Okay. We were between the support beams with the the, cat, the futon in the very first video, but then when we made more videos, we then moved the setup over here to this corner. And now we're back in this corner five years later. <laughs> Actually, no, six, seven years later. Oh, my God. Really? Yep. Because we started uploading reaction videos, and it was right before my birthday, June 20... Uh, it's June weird to me because I joined the channel and I was like, yeah, our channel is five years old. And I was like, that will always be how old this channel is. Like, yeah, now... It's, seven years later. Now, yeah, here like, we are. Yeah, you've been on the oh, channel yes, for over two years time. now. It marches on. Yeah, it's almost closer. coming up on three years. It's our imminent demise. So, eight years. The end of It'll everything. be eight years officially on June 15th. Uh, June fifteenth of this year, it'll be officially eight years. I've been doing this. At least it's not ten years yet. Not yet. I know Nogla and a lot of other big YouTubers just celebrated their ten year anniversary, which that's awesome. Damn. Oh yeah, they've been doing again. They're younger than us, and they started YouTube before us. Double digits. Well, and that's my thing too. I, if I, if I would have started doing YouTube earlier, maybe we would be bigger. Maybe we'd be in a different place. I don't know. Maybe we wouldn't ever got started at all. You never know. Never do know. Started at just the proper time. That's how it goes. Like, so anyway, everyone, this was uh, the no, odd ones no out. No sense worrying about what could have been. Uh, you should worry about what could be. What could be? Yes. So anyway. That was The Odd Ones Out, How to Find Inspiration. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and hopefully uh, we will see you all in the next one. But until then, I guess we will be signing off. I'm Nate. I am Nick. We'll see you then, everybody. Peace out. Check it out. Feel good. Check it out.